Um, welcome everybody. Um, super excited to kick off. Um, so we're gonna do some, some introductions, then we're gonna go over the project brief, kind of under, you know, explain sort of how this is all gonna work. I'm sure you have a lot of questions about that and everything. And then, um, then we'll spend a little time at the end going over, you know, pairing you up and going over the first story for, for this coming week. So kind of get you off to a fast start, have you pair off with mentors and um, kind of figure some of those things out. But um, yeah, I'll start, with, I'll start with introductions with myself. So I'm Andrew Hedges, I'm, I'm the founder of Collab Lab. Um, I'm an engineering manager at a company called Zapier. It's a workflow automation company. Um, several Zapier people involved with Collab Lab, including on this call, you'll meet them in a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, um, Collab Lab, for this little backstory, started uh, last summer. Um, you know, I, I taught at a, at a coding school here in, in Portland a few years ago, like four years ago, and have kind of kept in touch with like another early career developer community here in Portland. And um, I was, I actually got together and was talking with um, a graduate of that code school back in July. And he was saying like, it's really hard to stay motivated and keep working on, on code and stuff now that I'm not in school. And I was asking him, you know, what he thought would be helpful. Like what would be helpful to kind of stay motivated, stay involved in it, like keep learning. Um, and he, he said that one of the things that he thought would really help him would be to have other people to be accountable to, like have a real project to work on, be working with other people. And so, um, we were sitting there and I was like, you know, I, I just built this little app for myself. I could probably just write out a bunch of stories. And if we could find, you know, a couple of other people to do this with you, we could actually just run a project and see how it goes. And he's like, that'd be amazing. So he and I went to, we were about to go to a, a junior developer meetup here in Portland. Um, we met, uh, Caitlin Greffley who was there and she was like, yeah, I'll do it. That sounds, sounds great. Found another couple of people. And then we were, you know, the kind of the idea was, was, uh, kind of born. So we, um, Ran the first cohort in August of last year, and um, you are the sixth cohort. So we've gone through a few of these now, and like the uh, uh, done a lot of refinement on on the process. But it's like we've had a, had a lot of really good feedback, just kind of um, for how the uh, how the whole thing has gone. People are, you know, they're finding jobs, or they're just feeling more confident about going out and interviewing, or about their kind of collaboration skills and coding skills. So um, yeah, super excited to welcome you into this. Um, my, so I'm, I'm an engineer manager. I've been a web developer for about, about 20 years, but before that I was also an educator for a, a little while, um, working in higher ed, doing a ton of training and stuff. So, um, yeah, super, super excited. Just, and like, just, um, really kind of grateful to have everybody, all the other people who participated in this whole thing, like actually be willing to put in time and energy to it. So really fun. Super glad you're all here. Um, I'll introduce the mentors and Michelle, and then we'll go around all of you all and um, kind of hear your stories a little bit too. But uh, Steve, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Hey, I'm Steve. Right now I'm out in uh, Melbourne, Australia, but uh, we claim California is home. Uh, my family and I have been traveling kind of nonstop for going on two years now. Uh, with two kids, a three and a five year old with us, so keeps things interesting. But I'm also uh, working at Zapier and working as a front-end engineer there. And I've been doing web development for about five or six years now. Before that, I've been uh, working as a musician. I was a saxophone player, just playing around in Los Angeles. Uh, and then, yeah, just picked up the, the tech bug and learning code and uh, kind of did, was in that same position I think a lot of you all are, are in right now. So totally get that, but uh, yeah, mentored uh cohort three back in start around december so yeah really excited uh to be working with you all yeah send it over to uh to jason sweet what's going on everyone uh jason phillips i'm originally from new york live in oakland uh i think this is my 17th year as a developer um it's kind of crazy how time flew um Kind of like Steve, I actually started out in web development while pursuing a career in DJing. I also actually dropped comp science and math as a dual major in college, then dropped out of college to pursue DJing and somehow still became a developer. So <laughs> look how life works. Um, currently, I'm a director of engineering for an ed tech company, um, To You. In particular, we create uh, development boot camps and boot camps of other programs and then house them in continuing, ed ugh, continuing education schools. Uh, and I also teach through UC Berkeley and at University of Denver. I teach full stack web dev and occasionally uh, 
the intro to data science and data visualizations. Um, my dear friend Hedges, I met back in the early days of Twitter, who was my, uh, I'd say my first like non-local like sponsor and advocate as, as well as mentor in my head. Um, and we worked together for a bit at Apple, um, same department, uh, different teams, and kind of, you know, become super close since. Um, so glad to be involved here. I think this really um, aligns a lot with why I teach in general. Um, a lot of us were looking for the resources that, you know, I know I was looking for back in 2001, two, three, four, that just simply didn't exist. Uh, so for me, it's important that instead of being you know, some sort of gatekeeper of like, ah, you didn't walk up writing, you know, walk up the hill five miles each way, writing code on a notepad, an actual notepad, right? <laughs> instead, I'd rather like, you know, kind of help um, guide, mentor, and teach and let you all do stuff that I never even thought was possible. Um, so glad to be a part of the cohort. This is my first cohort uh, mentoring here with uh, Collab Lab. So glad to be here. Cool, Michelle. Hey, I'm Michelle. I'm a customer champion at Zapier. That's how I know Andrew. Uh, I'm gonna be helping with all the code of conduct and I help with a lot of the admin stuff for Collab Lab. Cool. And now, all of y'all, I want to just hear a little bit about what, what's your situation? Like, what kind of brought you to Collab Lab? Maybe, uh, yeah, just a couple, like where you live would be good to know. <laughs> like, just so we kind of put uh, places to, uh, to faces. Who wants to start? I'll start. Okay. Um, I'm Scott. Uh, I'm in Portland, Oregon. I graduated from Epicotus Boot Camp almost a year ago. Um, and I've, since then, I've been working on a freelance project for a small law firm. And I'm interested in Collab Lab because I have no like agile <laughs> experience um, and also don't have much ex uh, experience with React. So kind of looking to get more front end, solidify back end stuff and get that, especially that agile experience. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Who's next? I'll go. There, there we go. <laughs> um, so I'm originally from Fremont, California, but I reside in Cupertino at the moment. Um, I've been coding for about a year and a half, I would say. And uh, what brought me to Collab Lab is I just, I've been through a boot camp, but I wanted to get, um, um, what's the best way to say it? I just wanted to get more experience working with a group outside of school to see like different structures and all of that. So, yeah. Yeah, cool, welcome. Hey, Kingo, um, I'm Sarah. I'm from Pennsylvania. Um, I have a graphic design background, so I've been doing that for a very long time. And then just from that going through, we had like HTML, CSS classes and all that. So I have a pretty strong background in that, but I've always wanted to learn more and more advanced stuff. Um, I did the uh, Udacity Grow with Google scholarship thing and got a lot of React experience in Git and it's all, it was just so much at once, very fast that I've been looking for like, I guess a team project to help and I've been looking for a job and have trouble getting just interviews because I'm looking for like fully remote teams and jobs because I live in a very remote area. So <laughs> that's the first opportunity, but yeah, so looking forward to I, an agile is something I've never done like the stories thing. So just looking to mm -hmm. learn. Ooh, yeah. Great. All right. I guess I'll go. Yeah. Guess. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, my name is Janet, um, AKA miles. I signed up for this because I did a boot camp last year and one of the girls that was in my cohort, one of the ladies that was in my cohort, uh, did the collab lab and I kind of watched her on Twitter and I thought it was going to be awesome. And I thought like, you know, I always missed this whole, I feel like boot camp didn't give me the experience of like what it really is working in a group um, and working in an agile group. And so I come from a like 
background that has nothing to do with tech. I was a circus performer. I was an artist. I was a fashion design student. So any opportunity I can get where I can actually get a real hands-on experience and it's not like a boot camp or it's not like a lecture, but it's actually like a real project with real people who have a real background. I'm always for it. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm here. And I also awesome. live in the Bay Area. I live in Oakley, California, which is about an hour outside of San Francisco. So nice. all the fellow Bay Area people, hello. <laughs> that's great. Cool. Well, welcome everybody. So so glad you're all here. Um, I'm gonna actually kind of turn it over to to Steve to kind of walk us through the the project brief. Um, there's a yeah he'll he'll tell you more about it, but um, the yeah the project we're gonna do is this thing that I kind of built for myself a couple times. And anyway, it's um but it's uh it's pretty fun. Um, you wanna share your screen? You want I can share my screen if your internet's flaky, Steve. You would, um, let me give it a try. Let's see how it okay. How all right, it goes. go for it. All right, so can you all see the project brief here? Yep. And if you want to, I can't find it. Okay, so yeah, kind of like what Andrew mentioned, we're just gonna be building a, a smart shopping list. So to be able to add, we'll just open it up here. So this is basically the, the live version of one way it could look, um, but this is the one Andrew bought where you can Go in, you can add new items. We all need food and we need it soon. <laughs> yeah, you can go add something in there, say when it's done, and then, and then eventually it would be able to recommend when you need to buy something else. But that's just kind of the really high level view of what we're building. What you end up with doesn't necessarily have to look exactly like that or not. We'll be able to make all those choices as we go. Um, but yeah, as we go through the brief here, you can see we've got a link to that app that I just showed you, just kind of as a, a, of what, what it might possibly look like. We've got all of the links for everything that we need. Issues, for instance, has everyone had to go through these and, and kind of familiarize yourself with uh, the tasks that we'll be working on and, and that sort of stuff? Yes. Okay, yeah, as you come in here, these are all of the, the items that we'll be tackling week to week. And so we'll kind of get a feel for uh, as we move everything, you know, as you're working on them, we go and review each ticket as you get towards the end of the week. And then we'll, we'll get more into the, the process of just kind of agile, scrumish kind of workflows. Um, yeah, as we just keep going down through here. Has everybody had a chance to clone the repo and kind of get the project just up and running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Have, have others been able to do that as well? Yep. Yeah. I haven't done it just yet, but it should okay. be pretty straightforward. Yeah, there's nothing, it's just a straight uh, create React app mm -hmm. um, application. So, you know, if you have, you know, recent version of Node, NPM and Git, all those kinds of things, it should be, Pretty straightforward to get it on, um, running, so. Yep. Um, yeah, and as we kind of keep going through here, so, and as it mentions, we're, we're figuring about five hours, give or take a week, that we're all uh, committed to, to doing. Some might be more, some might be less uh, on any given week, kind of based on what you're working on. Um, the thing that I always try to harp on and throw out and push more than anything is, be noisy, get, throw questions out in the channel, ping a mentor. Uh, if there's something that's blocking you that might increase that five hour commitment, let us know so that we can really get that blocker out of your way and you can get back to working on the stuff that you're here for, which is working together and growing those skills, uh, working collaboratively, working remotely. So I'll be saying that probably over and over again, uh, ask questions. So going through here, here's the schedule of our pairings, each person will get paired to someone new every week. And then that pair will get kind of um, paired up with a mentor uh, week to week as well. But feel free to ask any of the mentors any questions. Uh, you can keep all conversations public in the channel and all of us will be, you know, we're all in this together. And just to be super clear, so Steve is, um, Steve and, and Jason are the mentors. Um, Steve's been through a, a cohort before 
Jason's first time, but they're both, they're both kind of your go-to people. I'm here. I can, I'm kind of a backup mentor. I'm going to be doing kind of the administrative side of things, keep things kind of running. And Michelle is your point of contact for the code of conduct. So just so, so those roles are, are super clear. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah. And then pair programming, that's a huge thing um, that we really, really get behind. And if anyone's unfamiliar with that, essentially it's just, you work on a problem synchronously with somebody. So two people get onto a call, you'll have one person essentially driving, who's doing the typing and another person who's kind of thinking out loud and, and working the problem out. And you kind of tackle that ticket, that issue with two people uh, working together. Um, yeah, and kind of as it mentions, there is no right way to do it. There are a lot of um, ways that might be beneficial, but I think it's different for everybody. And it'll be something that, uh, it's a skill that you keep working on. So it may not feel as good at first, but as you go, I think it'll become easier. And, uh, and it's a great, great skill to have. And then let's see, as we keep going every week, uh, we'll have sync up and it'll contain uh, a demo. So each team will, each pair will go through and showcase the great work that they did that week. Um, a big part of that is opening up your PRs early and getting those in, get the feedback rolling. And by the time you get, we get to the end of the week, which will be, I think this time every week, Andrew, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. By the time we get here, demos will be uh, ready to go. And yeah, we can all celebrate the hard work everybody did every week. And then we have a couple rituals that we alternate every other week. So as it was said, on odd number of weeks, we'll have some sort of presentation from one of the mentors. Um, yeah, it'll be a learning module. So we'll talk about things like, like pair programming, uh, pull request or PR reviews, kind of going through that whole process. And then, and then we'll have a third one that we kind of figure out uh, when we get there. And then we'll have kind of a preview of the upcoming week where mentor kind of brainstorm an idea of the approach they're going to take for that issue the, the coming week and then on the even numbered weeks we'll have a retrospective and this is a really common uh ritual that agile or scrum teams usually have where we go through and look at the weekend or look at the the two-week cadence that we've done and just say what went well what could we have improved upon and what should we what should we change and just a really great way to get uh any blockers or any things that we want to do better at just get them out there and we can address them and also celebrate the things that that are going really well and the things that we want to keep doing so moving along any questions so far no all right mm -hmm. we'll keep it rolling so a week seems like is a lot of time to to work on an issue to work on a problem but it goes really quickly. And one thing we want to do is prepare you for kind of the real working life, which is when you start to work on something and you think it's done, it's not really done because going through the review process can take a few days. So get your work in as soon as possible and start doing it because the, the work doesn't end when you've kind of submitted that work for a pull request. It ends when you're all done and you're able to merge that ticket, which can take, take a day or two depending. So you really want to try to get that PR open by as early as possible. Sometime early in the week, uh, your team members can review, chime in on that. Your mentors can uh, do that as well. And then, and then, yeah, we'll have a much better chance of getting all that work merged in by the end of the week. And as we keep going down, so kind of, as we mentioned, everything is, uh, in an agile-ish kind of way. And one of those things is user stories. So as we go back here and just kind of look as an example, this up here. Yeah, so everything kind of breaks down into stories. Uh, where do we go here? Okay. So these first few stories in the, the first few weeks are really kind of, uh, kind of foundational things as we go and build out the kind of the groundwork for the app that we're actually going to be building 
And so one thing or a couple things to keep in mind is that there will more than likely be merge conflicts as we, we get started with these first few tickets. So it's to be expected, all good stuff. Um, but yeah, you can see how each of these tickets breaks down into some kind of story where it tells you kind of the overall goal you wanna have at the end of this story. And then some of the, the criteria that uh, each mentor will be looking at to kind of determine whether that has been accomplished or not. You'll hear one of the things you'll hear is the definition of done. Yeah, for sure. AC stands for acceptance criteria. So you'll see that and that's kind of the, you know, those bullet points of sort of it needs to do this, this and this in order to be uh, free to consider that the story is done. Exactly. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions about kind of uh, stories or are these tickets? Um, I was curious to know how many um, tickets a team usually gets in a week. I mean, there's far more than eight or six. I guess there's, I guess that, that works out, doesn't it? There's about, about one per week. Mm -hmm. But each team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. So yeah. each story is, is scoped to hopefully take around five hours for the pair. But um, yeah, you'll just take on one story per week. So, you know, part of the idea is that it's not, we don't want to burden you with too much. Like this is kind of like a thing you're, you're taking time out of the other things you're doing um, to work on. So, you know, you're welcome to spend more time on it than five hours. We try to keep it, keep the scope pretty limited so you can, you know, get through the work and, you know, like between like kind of Monday and Wednesday with a couple of pairing sessions. Yep, exactly. And again, if it feels like time is, is, shrinking and you're you're blocked on something or you've been spending a lot of you just been spinning your wheels on something that's not exactly uh the work throw those things out in the channel be very vocal about um just where you are and what what might be blocking you which kind of brings us nicely into coordination and communication um mm -hmm. we want to have as many of our conversations out in public so that we can all kind of benefit from anything you've learned any roadblocks you might hit um, Slack is really useful for just being able to go through and search for the problem that you might be working on. More than likely someone else has already encountered it. So it's really important to um, kind of rather than DM a mentor directly or DM one of your, uh, your colleagues, just to put it out in the channel and just mention them, at mention them and let them know there. So that again, that, that visibility, that transparency is there. We're all on this together and we're all learning. So. Yeah, and that can feel, feel a little really scary. It can feel a little scary at first to like kind of expose the fact that you don't know something, right? But um, something that's like super important to understand about this whole experience is that this is not school. You're not being graded. You know, there's no test at the end or anything like that. Like we're all we are is a team that's trying to build something, right? So, you know, it, if you think about it that way, and you're you're willing to kind of be a little vulnerable about the fact that like, I know this, but I don't know this, and just be have that stuff out in the open, then we can all work together to make the, the project happen, which is sort of the, the goal here. So um, yeah, hope, you know, it, what I've seen with other cohorts is that it usually takes, you know, two, three, four weeks to really kind of get that, like, like, you know, kind of buy into that. But once you do, then you're, you feel more free to just kind of be in the channel and admit when you made a mistake or like when, it's, when something's not going to happen on time. Um, and that way we can all work together to make, you know, kind of have a good outcome. So, um, yeah, we're a team working together. It's not school. It's like a huge, huge part of what we do here. Yeah. And I'll even mention when you go to a new job and you come in somewhere, there's so many things that you don't know. You're, mm -hmm. you're just going to have to ask questions uh, rather than spend, you know, hours and hours trying to figure out something that someone will have a five minute answer to. Yeah, so it's, for sure. we're, we're all here together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of talking about communication and how to work back and forth with your team. So Slack is one thing we, we talked about where you can kind of have somewhat more uh, close to synchronous conversations. Another one that we like doing is opening or putting conversations in the actual issues. You can add comments in there. Um, but we mentioned here, you can create a wiki page. You can use uh, GitHub has a feature called draft PRs where you can essentially open up a sketch of a PR where it's not quite official, but conversations can start you can add comments in the code and it's, it's a lot more illustrative for your thought process and some options you might be considering. And it's, and it's definitely easier for a mentor to come in and get a picture of where you are and, and what you're thinking about. So 
for me, I like draft PRs. I use them at work all the time, but for you, it might be different. So I would just say, try things out and, um, and see what you really like. And let's keep going. So opening up a new branch, uh, there's different places have different conventions and we're no different as far as naming branches. So it was simple, like initials of uh, person one working on it. There's a pair, so we wanna have person two and then a really short description of what the work is that you're, you're doing. So this one here would be Stacy Taylor Sima and ooh, Alejandro uh, Nanez, who's another mentor here, or both mentors. And then, yeah, and then a description of, of what they were working on. So a really simple way of just identifying different branches and anyone can come in and, or anyone on the team can come in and have a good idea of, of what it is. So if you're, Actually, anyone, you know, something, yeah. so, something to mention about just like the creation of the branches and the PRs and that stuff is like one of the goals, like the reason that we're in GitHub um, is part, partly is because like it's a good tool, but it also partly you get that little green, that graph, right? With all of the green squares and you get that by creating PRs and, and you know, submitting commits and stuff. So when, you know, when you're pairing up and you're creating those branches and when you're deciding who, who does the PR and all that kind of stuff, just switch it off. Make sure that everybody gets a chance to have a, you know, a couple of those over the course of the project. So you, you get those green squares going, you know, that's part of like, it, you know, it's kind of this artificial thing in the industry, but like, you know, a hiring manager looks at your graph and like, oh, they've been busy. That's cool. You know, like they're, like they're actively coding. So we want those green squares to show up on your profile. In yeah. um, bootcamp, we use git pair. Does that work here? Or is that not common? I don't know what that is. A pair to yeah, a, I'm not familiar. Okay. I'll look into that and see if I can get you that. Yeah, yeah. Throw something in the channel. This sounds okay. interesting. Yeah. And, and also kind of building off of what Andrew said, all of this stuff is public and open. So this is like able to uh, site we show the more conversations that you have in GitHub will be the more conversations and kind of collaboration that you can show a uh, job that you're applying for. So just of especially working with pull requests, I think is a, is a huge, a huge benefit if you're able to show an employer like, yeah, I opened a pull request, we went through these problems, hit X, Y, or Z, and this is how I went about addressing them. Like, that's a question that people ask all the time is like, how do you work on a team? Like, this is exactly that. Yeah. yeah so as you open up a pull request, we're using Netlify to deploy uh, the project. So as soon as you open a pull request, Netlify will do a deploy of that PR. So you can go and test it out and, and see how it would be looking on Netlify before you actually merge that and deploy it to the production site. So that's one thing you'll see that at the, uh, at the bottom of your pull request as one of the, the tasks that GitHub will do. And then, yeah, just kind of reiterating, be nosy on Slack. We're here to help you get unstuck. And, and yeah, we're super excited to help you all grow. So any, any other questions or any concerns or anything? Yeah, there's a little bit more in the, in the project brief about just sort of the like specific steps you need to go through to make, like, make sure your thing is done and actually go through the right steps to get merged. But um, yeah, feel free to kind of read that and ask any questions you, you have about it. Um, but yeah, how are you all feeling about it? I'm excited to get into it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just noticed that I just noticed the uh, second line there this morning, um, notifying that we're going to be uh, each team is going to be doing code reviews before we get the mentors to do it. Mm -hmm. To back this up, that's kind of really cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the idea there is kind of that you know we have it's very intentional. We have a you know four developers in two pairs because you'll be working on the stuff that you're working on. But then by code reviewing the other stuff, it means you you see all of the code throughout the entire project, right? So you're you have your head around sort of the entire scope of what's happening theoretically. So um, yeah, it's kind of nice. If the team were even six, there would be parts of the the code base that you would be unfamiliar with, right? So um, yeah, that's pretty intentional. So yeah, you um you get that code review from the peers first. It's good practice to code review other people's stuff too. And we'll go over you know some kind of um some ways to do that or you know. A lot of people come in, they're like, I don't know how to code review. It's like, well, we'll, you know, next week we'll, we'll do a, a learning set, learning module on 
on sort of what makes a good code review. Awesome. Um, and then, yeah, and then the, um, the mentors kind of act almost in like a, a product owner role. That's a kind of a scrum term, but um, you know, the, like we'll, we will look at your PR from a technical perspective, but we'll also be sort of just, um, you know, like the primary thing is to validate that it meets the acceptance criteria. So does it do from a product perspective, does it do what it's supposed to do to sort of keep the project on track and that we're building the right thing. Right. So, um, so yeah, so if it, it generally works and it does, you know, satisfy the, the criteria, it's generally going to get approved um, with maybe suggestions for, you know, maybe here's a little cleaner way to do it, or you could break this out into two components or, you know, those kinds of good suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. The main, the main purpose of all this is to get experience and working on a team and, and working with kind of these, these ways of, of, uh, of collaborating. So we'll, we'll, as an aside, there may be things saying like, here's, more technical advice or uh, critiques, but the, the the goal is not to be doing like a deep dive into any particular technology. What, all right, yeah. what else? Yeah. Elise, Sarah, Miles, any you have any any comments or reactions or anything? Just excited. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Cool. <laughs> and for those of you that have had boot camp experience where you might have had group projects, this helps to uh, kind of fix sometimes that challenge of, I worked on this project, but I did this part and I have no idea what everyone else did. And then also the other challenge of, yeah, we created a project brief and we built something, but you had no one else kind of there to kind of help you from a product standpoint, drive it into end. So these are two of those things in particular that I think will help round out, especially from uh, each of the things you all were saying in the beginning of, of this, uh, will kind of help you with that experience as we go. I can't wait. I know, I know, it's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Anything else? One last chance to, no? We're good. All right, so. Yeah. This first week, um, Elise and Scott, y'all are paired up, and Sarah and Miles are paired up. Um, so we can draw scra straws or rock, paper, scissors or something for who, who takes story one or story two. And then Jason and Steve, um, like you'll pair up with one of the, the pairs, and then we'll do breakout rooms, which I will work on while you're all deciding that. I'll figure out how to do the breakout rooms. And then... Um, and yeah, then we'll spend 10 or 15 minutes kind of going over the getting you oriented to the, to the project, like kind of get the branch set up, get a draft PR made even, um, and uh, go over sort of your approach for the first story. So uh, yeah, who wants to take um, which story? There's no right or wrong answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty interested in doing that first story, uh, the fire bait and component. That one's pretty exciting to me. Yeah. Is that cool with everybody? All right. So what did I say? It's a uh, okay, Scott and Elise. All right, let me. All right. Who? So which mentor is going to go with that one? Uh, Jason, you have a ton of fire Firebase experience, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is part of the curriculum that I teach on one of my uh, boot camps. So I, I'm a fan of fire Firebase. All right. So that's that one, and then. These breakout rooms are kind of, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll send you to the breakout rooms and I'm gonna, then I'll join you, Jason, just to kind of, since it's your first time through this all, you know, I'm sure it'd be fine, but um, <laughs> I'll hop in there with you. And then Michelle, thank you for being here. Um, you're welcome to drop off now while we do this last part, but thanks for being here. Bye everybody. All right, see ya. Okay. Bye. All right, we should, oh, there we go, yep, bye, see, oh, okay. So Scott, do you, do you need to hit a button? I think you need oh, is that what, I couldn't tell if that was your screen or mine. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Hello, hello. All right. Cool. I know, it's exciting. Okay, so. Um, let's see. I can share the uh, issue list. 
that first issue. Sharing my screen. All right. So there it is. As a component, it's a little weird. It's kind of a, it's the only story that, that is worded this way, but I didn't know how else to reward it. Um, I want to be able to read and write, read from and write to the Firestore database. Um, do y'all know what Firestore is? Is that something you've encountered before? Yes. You've worked with it. At least have you worked with that before? Or? I haven't. Okay. It's um so it's a Google product, which means that it's well documented and highly available and reliable. <laughs> um, but it, uh, Firestore is one piece of Firebase, which is like a bunch of different services that you can use. Firestore is just the database part, and it's um it's a called a document store. So it, uh, as opposed to if you've ever worked with a relational database that has you know, multiple tables and you join things together and stuff, this is basically just a, like a JSON blob, like a document, um, not a JSON blob. No offense, Jason. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, basically you just like, you, you create some, some JSON, you can create a, like a little object and you stuff it in the database and you can read it back out. Um, is that pretty accurate, Jason? Yeah. Uh, and if one one thing that may help for framing it, actually, I'll start with a question. Uh, what kind of database experience have you had, uh, Scott and Elise, if any? I've done Postgres, a little bit of MySQL. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some other relational thing. I did MongoDB once and Firebase I've used. Um, yeah. Cool. So yeah, my, you can think of Firestore as being somewhat similar to uh, the MongoDB version of No NoSQL, right? Um, like uh, Andrew said, it's just it's JSON documents instead of being based on being relational. There is a semi-relational aspect to Firebase, which is the real-time data store, but we're not using that for this project. Um, that is also their legacy uh, database. They kind of moved to this more highly available. And also, thankfully for us, free um, kind of version that, like I said, will give you some experience that's akin to working with MongoDB um, and should be pretty fun for this. Um, it, it'll, you'll see that as you work with it, it'll mimic a lot of what you expect if you've dealt with some like REST APIs that bring that talk in JSON. So um, should be a nice, fun piece for you to start with. Hey, Elise, are you... Um... Did I invite you to our GitHub organization? I feel you like accept? you did, but I was just looking for it and I can't seem to find it. Okay. Um, so, pro yeah. tip. Oh, I am. Organization invites are not in your notifications. It's oh. the dumbest thing on earth. You have to do it for your email. <laughs> I, I did accept it and I found it. Um, is it. Is my name just not showing up? Oh, it's, it's East Spain. I seen it. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right. I thought I would find it by your name anyway, but it didn't. Okay, anyway, so, all right, you two are assigned. Um, we should just go through the motion of actually creating the branch. So I don't know which one of you wants to create the branch for the first time. Um, I'll pull back up the project for each kind of remind you of the format. So it's this kind of thing where, um, and actually we can even use this one. We just changed the initials, right? It's a uh, so like es dash sb dash connect dash to dash firestore. So um, here's an like an example of how to like what the command is to create the branch. So um, I don't know if Elise, if you while we were talking, if you had a chance to pull the pull the repo down. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay. You know what? I'll figure out the whole folder aspect of it later. Yeah. Um, Scott, do you have it? Hold down yeah, if you I'll want to. Down. I'm opening my terminal right now. Okay. So maybe you can create the branch. Might take less time to clone it. <laughs> Will it open the sauna? Yeah, and you'll, each week you'll do this. Like the first thing you'll do. You create the branch. So whoever creates the branch pushes the branch up to GitHub. The other person pulls it down. So you both have the branch. And then 
you just like go ahead and like immediately create a draft PR um, so that you can uh, then kind of collaborate within that for the during the week. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, my internet's getting a little a little extra Comcasty today. Uh, oh yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Um, I can create the branch if okay. need be. I do. You haven't done it yet, Scott. Is that right? No, I'm still. Okay. I'm yeah, go for it then. Okay. Elise. And it needs to be. I lost the Zoom. Where did it go? It needs to be. Okay. So. Is SB okay, Scott? You're yep. okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so I created the branch. Cool. All right. Um, so you created it, and then here's the next step is to push it back push. up to GitHub so that Scott can grab it. Do I have to create the same branch on my locally and then? Uh... No, you should be able to, once Elise pushes it up, you should be able to um, just do a git fetch and then uh, git checkout and the branch name and it should be connected up okay. to that remote branch. Okay, so it's pushed, so let me know. Okay, so just for master, I can just do git fetch mm -hmm. and origin? No, just. Git fetch should work if you just cloned it from there. So, and then watch the output and it should say new branch and the branch name. Okay. All right. Yep. And check out. All right. Cool. Nice. All right. So now you all, you, the two of you have the, the same branch you can work off of. That's great. Um, and then creating the draft PR, uh, the next step. So, um, actually Jason, do you know, do you have to actually have a commit on that's, that's di the branch of the front, like it makes it different than master in order to create the draft PR? I don't remember. Uh, I believe so. Oh, that was a question I had. Oh, I talked to everybody though. Let's see, new pull request. Yeah, because I feel like it's going to keep doing this before. Yeah, right. There's no commits for the range. Okay, so um, anyway, so I guess we have to have to do that after we've made a commit. Um, we could make a dummy commit, sort of uh, just add a you know, a line break somewhere or something like that in order to do that. But um, we could also just leave that as a kind of an exercise for y'all to figure out how to get that draft PR created. Um, we have about 12 minutes left. So I just want to maybe let's talk, talk through sort of the, uh, the approach here. Um, what would be, uh, when you see this, like what's, what are your first thoughts of like, what would you do to kind of get, get started on this or kind of um, understand, you know, what you need to do? And you're talking about the, um, just the, sorry. Yeah, this, yeah, this story, uh, story. as a component, I want to be able to read from and write to the Firestore database. Mm -hmm. um, so it has three acceptance criteria. So the following have been added as project dependencies, Firebase and React-Firestore. Um, make a change in the Firestore database and it shows up in the app. Make a change in the app and it shows up in the Firestore database. So, you know, um, and I, in case you didn't catch it, 
you can actually, you should all have access to, there's a link to the database in the project brief. Yeah, I have that. Um, so if you go into there, you should be able to actually look at the console. And you can actually just create data here. You can just like make something up, um, you know, give it, you know, test or something like that as a name and add some data there. And then the idea is that if you add data in the database, that should flow through to the app. So you're reading from the database, right? And that should actually happen in real time. Once you have these, um, these dependencies in there and you have it wired up, uh, that should all just like happen um, kind of instantly. And then you need some way to make a change in the app and have it go back the other direction as well. So, um, so we like need to create like um, like cred functionality in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without the the U and the D, right? So it's like cur functionality. <laughs> <laughs> create and read. Um, but uh, this so this Firebase component that we're Firebase library that you're going to add package that you're going to add. That's a Google thing, and that's that helps us hook up to all their services. React Firestore is another component that just gives you some kind of convenience features, makes it act a little bit more like React um, within your project. So there's probably a bit of maybe some reading up that you all should maybe do about um, how these things work. You know, they each have their own documentation, how to kind of wire them up. Um, I will tell you that here in this lib folder is there's a file that already contains all the keys mm -hmm. for your database. So, um, you know, one of the things you'll need to do is import that into wh wherever you're working with Firestore and that'll uh, allow you to uh, kind of connect with, uh, with the database. So, Yes, this is exactly why I wanted to do this project is or the um, the collab lab is because like I kind of know all these bits and pieces, but putting them all together is still pretty slow and torturous for me. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, one thing I'm been wondering about though is um, so we've got both a package lock JSON and a yarn lock. Um, mm. Is that, I thought we were supposed to only have one of them? Or like, are we all supposed to be using Yarn or NPM? Um, it's probably simpler if everybody uses NPM. NPM is what is gonna run on Netlify when it gets built and out to production. Um, NPM is, in, you know, you know, there's nothing else that you have to download and install in order to use mm -hmm. it and everything, you already have it. So um, okay. yeah, we tried using Yarn one, one time and we had one person who just couldn't get it installed and stuff. So we just kind of reverted back to using NPM. They're, they do basically the same thing, so. And then, um, are we supposed to be committing the package lock or do we not commit that? I believe we need to commit it, otherwise Netlify is gonna not, not be able to build the project, I think. Okay, so it's not doing NPM install on its own. Um, I've had problems with it in the past where it, um, yeah, it, uh, it has trouble kind of resolving all the dependencies and stuff, so. Okay. Yeah, that's been the workaround is to commit the package lock, so. Hmm. Got some reading to do. Yeah, okay. there's a little bit of reading to do with these two, these two components. Um, have you, have either of you worked with uh, like tests like Cypress or Jest or anything like that? You Jest. Really test? Jest, yeah. Yeah, because that one way you could, I mean, one way to satisfy the, the AC would just be to write a test that does this for you. Like you don't actually even have to build any UI if you don't want to. You could literally write, write a test that writes to the database and reads it back out. Um, and that's a nice way to avoid merge conflicts too. <laughs> like what we've seen in the past is both teams will build like an index page like, and then they have to resolve that somehow at the end of the week. Um, so if you're comfortable writing tests, um, that might be a way to, uh, to do this that's a little, a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's just the way you phrased that. Um, 
Maybe because I, I I initially read this as we would be hooking up the hot, the fire store and creating um, the compo the basic component that's reading and writing to it. But it sounds like we're just because you, just because of what you said with the test, it sounds like we're only um, hooking up the um, fire base and making sure it can be read and read from and written to. Yeah, the the idea being that like if we we just want to prove that we can read and write, you know. With the database and then you know when we actually need to hook that up to some ui we'll do that in a future story so with with every story that you do the whole way through like try to do the minimum you have to to satisfy the ac um because there'll be future stories that you know wire this up to that or you know you know kind of make it more complicated or whatever but um you know to kind of keep you know we've tried to write the stories in such a way that what's in the acceptance criteria should take you around the five hours. And so, um, you know, if you go above and beyond that, uh, like it's, yeah, it's, it's just not necessary. Like it, the other future stories will cover those, those pieces of functionality. So yeah, I would say you could write a test to do this. Um, you'd actually be the first cohort to actually take that advice <laughs> if you do it, which would be kind of fun uh, to see. Uh, but it's a totally valid way to, to meet the acceptance criteria. And then, then what you do is you establish a pattern that people can then, they can say, okay, I see how it's done in the test. I'll pull that over into my component and they'll be able to quickly wire it up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this also gives you some practice in, as we're creating PRs, making sure that you always have PRs that uh, your team can always uh, manageably review, right? Um, if you go, you know, just all out and like, oh, we got this crazy component and it kind of like auto injects and we we heard about decorators, so we use the decorator. Then you end up with something where you're kind of, you end up having to review, then review and it, it beyond kind of self-education. Um, and then, like Andrew said, if, you know, the next ticket is like, all right, cool, we want to add this transactional piece. And like, huh, so we wrote all this crazy stuff so that all you have to do is dot get, but it doesn't it's not expanded enough yet, right? It's, it, it's kind of like you don't want to future-proof in the early stages, right? It's just cool. If we pull this file in, we, have, we can connect to the database and do something. Mm -hmm. So should PRs kind of follow the same uh, general idea of, that a function should, like just do one thing, do it right? <laughs> Yeah, I would say reducing, yeah, making the PR, that's actually something we're going to, we'll go over this next week in the learning module, but, um, you know, you want to make your, your PRs as small as possible and sort of as, like you're saying, sort of single responsibility as possible. And that makes it easier for the reviewer to, to get, get in and understand what it is and understand whether that, like, it's really going to do the thing you're trying to get, trying to do, right? So, um, yeah, the longer the PR is, like in a, in a real world setting, like <laughs> on a software team, the longer your PR is, the harder it is to get somebody else to actually agree to review it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it kind of helps us with the implementation of one of the, the I would say, prevailing ideas. I won't say the, the main ideas of, of, of Agile, right? That you can, that work is iteratively able to be shipped. So you can focus on having something that if you ship it out, is its own complete piece that can function on its own, mm -hmm. right? Instead of having to be like, all right, cool. You have this huge thing and it's like eight parts. And then it's like, uh, yeah, because I've, you know, to Andrew's point, I've definitely been on a team where uh, they're like, hey, Jason, cool. We know you just started here like a few weeks ago. Our bad, we didn't tell you what our Git approach is, but we're not reviewing an 1100 line change commit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you asked me to rebuild your, your experiments. <laughs> I did that. And they're like, yeah, you could do that better though. And I was like, fair point. And you just kind of start to get to the practice of this is a complete idea. It's small enough and digestible enough to be reviewed, but it's also um, small and digestible enough to satisfy the acceptance criteria and then be in production. That makes sense. Yep, yep. Cool. So let's see. So we've got the branch created. Um, we need to make a commit before we can create the draft PR. Um, you can also write right here in this issue. So, you know, TCL6, March shopping list, issues three. You can have a conversation right here about, um, about the approach. So we could, you know, say,
So, so now we have kind of documented some of the things we talked about, right? We talked about. So, you know, you can have your conversation in here in the draft PR. You can have a conversation that's linked to the actual sort of lines of code that you're that you've committed, um, and it makes for a nice uh, a nice way. Like Jason will be able to kind of he'll know where to go. Like he can go in here and see what's what you've been talking about. He can go into the draft PR and catch up on sort of the state of state of the code, and kind of quickly catch up and help you all out whenever you have questions. So. Um, would highly suggest that as a as a practice. Okay. So maybe the next thing to do is just to um, maybe the, you know Scott and Lise, the two of you can kind of set up your first pairing, like figure out when you would be able to do your first pairing session, um, and maybe agree on sort of what you would have done before you get to that. So you know it might be kind of reading up on React Firestore or something like that. Uh, that sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. So I guess what would work best for you, Scott? Like well, both the West Coast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty available. Um, mornings tend to be better for me, but I have no, I mean, this is, I, I don't, I'm pretty open. So um, I can be, I can be flexible. <laughs> would you be uh, open to starting at nine? AM? Mm hmm Absolutely. Awesome. Let's do it. Sweet. Nice. Is that tomorrow? Is that in here? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. And with that, y'all are already better than me, because I heard the words 9 a.m. and let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'll be sleeping at that time, right? <laughs> like 9 a.m. <laughs> I'm there, but my mind is still like, uh -huh. uh, second pot of coffee, please. <laughs> nice. And cool. Was, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, what were you thinking? Uh, just read up on uh, Firebase and React Firestore and, um, you know, just the documentation on getting them added to a project and then we can actually go through with that together. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Um, all right. I'll just write that stuff down for you. In the future, you can do this yourself, but it, um, and then you're going to read up on Um, so that's kind of the, I guess that's the homework. And then maybe the first thing you do when you get there is actually just add the, add the dependencies. Um, and then you can, then you can create the draft PR, right? Yeah, once you've added those and pushed that up. So, um, yeah, cool. Um, how are you feeling about it? Do you, need, do you need any other, like, any other direction? Would anything be helpful to kind of talk through at this point? I think that was pretty helpful. Yeah, I think I just need to read up on it and place myself. All right. Um, one question I have is, you know, because I originally pulled the repo down and did the npm install so I could run it. And so I have um, one change in my Git at this point on the package JSON. And Elise is going to do the same thing. I'm uh -huh. assuming it's going to happen to the same lines, but they're in two different, you know, they, would, they didn't happen, to, they're all going to be on the same lines, but they were just, that's coincidence. So I'm like wondering if that's going to be a problem. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing about NPM these days um, as an improvement is that it tries to make each um, individual action as repeatable and as deterministic as possible, uh, which is one of the major improvements they made also to, to speed in the installation. So you shouldn't get conflicts as you're both like adding something. Um, that said, the, the uh, old adage, uh, pull early and often and commit early and often comes into play here. Um, nine times out of 10, a quick pull down after someone pushes up can help you catch that much sooner. But for that stuff, as long as you're not mixing yarn and NPM, you should be fine. 
a lot of the issues I've started to see with package.json is yarn in NPM because they, you know, it's 95% the same result. They do shift things a little differently. Should we toss out that yarn lock in our repo or our branch and have that be one of the commits on it or? Well, actually, is the other group also using NPM commands or yarn commands? We, we should make sure that everyone's standardizing on one. Yeah, I, haven't used, I haven't used yarn here. I just noticed that that was in there. I will, I'll, I'll make sure everybody knows to use NPM. Yeah. Pretty sure Steve knows that that's how we're approaching it. So. Cool, because then if that's the case, then yeah, removing the yarn lock could be the first commit that gets you your draft PR going. Okay. So yeah, we remove yarn lock, add package lock. All right, are we are we good? You all have a have a a vague rough plan of what your maybe your next yes. step is. Okay, all right, very cool. Um, as you go and things come up, you know something's not clear. Um, you get stuck. I mean, Firebase when you're first working with it, you know their the official documentation is clearly written for developers. It's you know like it's like a it's not the friendliest kind of thing. I mean, you're all developers, but it's like. I mean, I know when I first looked at it, I was like, okay, I think I understand what they're, they're getting at here. Um, so don't be afraid to, you know, just in a channel or something, you know, say, hey, you know, could, what's the difference between an upsert and a, you know, a whatever, create or something, you know, like, just like ask those questions out, out in the channel, it's fine. I, everyone gets to benefit if you ask the channel in a public place, um, makes it searchable later, all that kind of stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, and remember, we're not using real-time database. Because that can get tricky. Because at some point, it, the the language gets really weird, and you're like, "All right, I don't know if they're saying it's analogous or not." But they're not. Um, Firestore is definitely so. Yeah, we're using Cloud Firestore. Cloud. Yeah, this this one. Yeah, not real time database. But yeah, if you're looking at in the documentation, right? Yeah, always look for Cloud Firestore. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. So yeah, I'll just uh, send out an invite tomorrow release. And yep. And we can just message each other on Slack and one of us can drop a Zoom link. Yeah. Have you used um, VS Code Live Share? Are you using VS Code? <laughs> I, I am using VS Code. Um, Live Share has worked sometimes, but not all the time. But we can for sure, I can try to see if I can get it working. And okay. then we can definitely try to use that tomorrow. Cool. Nice. Love it. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I'm excited for you. Good luck. Good luck this week. Jason is your your go to go to person. Yep. Your go to mentor. Go for so, like me. Yep. And um, At yeah. P. <laughs> That's it. Jason right. B. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Have a right. great night. All right. Take care. Bye. Start. I did not that, need to do that. <laughs> that thing where you say goodbye and I end up in the same room together, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. All right. Bye. Take care. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>